How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to get some work done on the Frankenstein Civic to get it ready for track season. So let's roll that intro and get into it. All right guys, so we haven't really covered a whole lot on the Frankenstein build in a while. Um, so I got some updates for you guys today. So we haven't had a whole lot of progress with the turbo build and uh, we've actually had to take a few steps back. Uh, so I've been a little bit depressed about that. So I haven't really uh, mentioned anything about it. And uh, I just didn't really feel like recording anything about Frankenstein for a while there. but. I think it's time that I uh, give you guys an update, so uh, let's get started on that. So basically what's happened is uh, when uh, they brought the engine to the machine shop to get a hone done on it, uh, they realized that uh, there's a bit more damage to the cylinder walls than they originally thought, uh, so now they're ending up having to bore it out. Uh, so unfortunately the shop that it was brought to does not do that work uh, because uh, the H22 has FRM cylinder walls, they do not deal with that kind of stuff. They can do the hone, but they do not do boring. So what they ended up having to do is ship the engine block to Ontario to get that work done. So it is gonna be a while now before the work is done in Ontario, and then they ship it back here to Manitoba where uh, we can get everything else finished. So it's gonna be a while yet before that gets done. Um, parts are all here, like we have the pistons, the rods, everything that we need to get the work done. So now it's just waiting for the machine work to get done, and then that way when it gets back to Manitoba, Lambda Motorsport can assemble the short block for me. Once I receive that back, then I can start ordering parts on getting that engine fully built and into a long block. But until that time, we're kind of just stuck where we are. So basically what that means is we are going to be running Frankenstein naturally aspirated this year. Um, so unfortunately my plan was to have a turbo by now, but that's obviously not going to happen. So last time I left off with Frankenstein, uh, we had uh, just done the front end swap where we had taken the cream colored uh, body panels off the front and I traded them with a guy for these black body panels. Uh, so that was all done, and then uh, we also did those carbon fiber fender cuts, uh, which as you can see right now, I have removed. Uh, so I do have the proper fender back on there, and I think I'm just going to run it like this. I wasn't too happy with the fender cuts, and I don't think I want to go that route anymore. So I think I'm going to leave it like this. I'm really digging it, so uh, we're going to leave it that way. Also, if you noticed, I'm running different wheels now, uh, so I do still have the SSR Type X's. Uh, but these are actually Tim's uh, racing wheels off of Eggplant. Uh, so uh, I bought those off of him and I'm going to be using them for the daily driving. Uh, and then I'm still going to use the SSR wheels for the track. So I do still have those set of wheels. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to be running these ones uh, for summertime. Going to car shows and car meets and stuff like that. And also for driving to the track. So I'm going to be using these wheels. So let me know what you think. I really like them. I think the bronze really works well with the car. Um, and uh, not to say that I don't love the SSRs, because I do, I love the old school look of them. Um, but there's just something about these that I'm really liking right now. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. I got Frankenstein put back together. The engine is running great, so uh, I've been driving it a little bit. I've been at a couple car meets now, and uh, I drove it to work a couple of times, and everything's been working really good. So uh, I'm just going to keep it the way it is for the summertime. Um, but in about a week's time, we have our first track day of the year. Uh, so I want to make sure Frankenstein is ready for that and something that I noticed while driving it uh, these past few weeks is that uh, the wheel bearings are really really bad so when I drive this car on the highway it revs at 4,000 rpm and with a Yonaka exhaust on there I should be able to hear the exhaust I can't even hear the exhaust anymore because the wheel bearings are so loud so I have ordered some new wheel bearings and uh, we're gonna get those installed because there's no way that I want to drive the car on the track if the bearings are bad. I don't need anything seizing or falling off on me. So uh, I have seen that happen before at the track where uh, an entire hub assembly shattered because the bearings were shot. The guy's wheel flew off and he ended up flying off the track. Uh, and I do not want that to happen to me or Frankenstein. So let's get these bearings replaced 
and then uh, hopefully we'll be nice and quiet and we'll be ready for the track. All right, guys, so let's give a listen to how loud these wheel bearings are. Yeah, they run nice and smooth, but they are extremely loud. And like, imagine this times 100 on the highway. Like, it is bad. So first thing I'm going to do is get this wheel off of here. Then basically all I have to do is remove the caliper and uh, the disc. And then uh, we should be able to yank that uh, big axle nut off of there, get the bearing off the spindle, and then uh, we'll just replace it. So it shouldn't be too bad. I actually just replaced this bearing last year. Um, but it was really cheap bearing off Rock Auto and uh, I'm wondering if uh, that was the problem. So I did order some higher end ones this time around. Uh, hopefully they last a bit longer, but uh, yeah, let's get this off of here. Nothing should be seized since I just did it last year, so it should be pretty smooth. guys so I had a little bit of an issue because the bearing ended up splitting and uh, part of the bearing ended up uh, staying seized on the spindle so uh, it was stuck on there pretty good I had to take out the air hammer and uh, buzz that thing off of there but it seemed to come off okay uh, the spindle's still in really good shape so I'm just gonna take some brake clean uh, get all the old grease off of there and I get it nice and cleaned up and then we will unbox the new bearing All right, so the new bearing looks like it has some kind of anti-seize on the inside of it already, which is good. Um, but usually what I like to do is put a little layer of grease on uh, the spindle as well, and that's just going to make sure that it doesn't stick. I mean, that's what I did last time when I installed that one, and clearly it didn't help. But uh, for me, it's a good practice anyway, just to make sure that uh, if it does stick on here, it's not going to be rusting on or anything like that. Uh, since it did pop off pretty easily with the air hammer. That definitely helped putting the grease on here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll slip this bad boy on and then we'll get it all tightened up. Alright guys, so I got the passenger side finished and it's looking mint. Uh, it's nice and quiet. The only sound I could hear from it was uh, from the brake pad rubbing on the rotor, which isn't a big deal because uh, it needs to readjust itself since I removed it. Uh, but other than that, it is nice and quiet. Uh, so I'm going to quickly bang out the driver's side and then uh, we're going to have a look at these uh, bearings and kind of see what the problem was. A few moments later. All right, guys. Well, the driver's side went a lot smoother than the passenger side did. So as you can see, this one actually stayed intact and it kind of just slipped right off. So that was an easy one to do. Didn't take very long. This one, on the other hand, as you saw before, uh, the bearing split. So this part ended up staying on the spindle. Had to do some work to get that off of there. But uh, all in all, it was a pretty easy job. Uh, so in looking at these bearings, you can kind of tell that uh, the seal blew on this one and uh, kind of grease was spraying everywhere. Um, I don't know if it's some kind of white lithium grease that they use in there or what, um, but it's a different kind than what's in this one. So um, I don't understand why, because I installed both of these at the same time. They were the same part number. 
um, but this one looks like it had a different grease in it um, but I don't know unless that's just a byproduct of having moisture in there or something like that I don't know but anyway there were definitely issues uh, looks like the seal probably broke on this one too uh, I could tell by uh, looking at uh, the rear trailing arms and uh, the spindle and the, the assembly there was all covered in grease so um, that one definitely had some problems as well uh, so we should be mint now so I got both new wheel bearings installed on the rear uh, so everything should be nice and smooth now and ready for the track uh, that was really the only issue that I had uh, when I was driving the car back and forth uh, was just the wheel bearing. That's the only thing that I was really worried about. Uh, there's no leaks under the car. It accelerates really well. It stops really well. So uh, it's basically performing exactly as it did last year. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the first track day of the year. Um, it's in about a week's time. So uh, we should be ready to go for that. Unfortunately, they do have some pretty strict rules in place uh, when it comes to uh, large groups of people and social distancing and all that stuff. Uh, so it doesn't sound like they're allowing spectators, uh, they're not allowing very many volunteers as well. Uh, so it's undecided at this point whether or not Tim's going to be there uh, because uh, he had wanted to volunteer and work one of the corners and then that way he could get some decent footage of Frankenstein driving by. Um, but it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. So uh, the only loophole that we can think of is if he pays a driver fee to get in and then uh, maybe we just share Frankenstein for the day. Uh, we've done that before. It was actually during high performance driving school uh, when the Sylvia broke down the first time. Uh, we ended up sharing Frankenstein for the whole weekend and uh, not a single problem with the car. It ran beautifully and uh, we didn't give it any brakes. So yeah, super reliable and a lot of fun at the track. So I'm hoping Tim comes to a decision whether or not he wants to come. But yeah, we're gonna get whatever footage we can. If it's just me flying solo for the day, I'll uh, bring the GoPro along. We'll get some interior footage and we'll see what I can do. But anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap up the video for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I was glad I was able to give you guys an update because it's been far too long and uh, glad we finally got some work done on Frankenstein. So it is ready to go. Super excited that the track's finally open and we're gonna get some seat time. Uh, it's been way too long. So if you're stoked about it, definitely give me a thumbs up. Uh, definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and drop us a comment. Let us know what you think. We love to hear feedback from you guys. And uh, I just wanna remind you guys that the MT Garage shop is still open. Uh, and we offer free shipping on all of our merch. So if you check out the link below, you'll see the MT Garage shop link down there. Give that a click and you can definitely check out some of our stuff. And uh, if you wanna support the channel, pick up a sticker or two, and uh, that definitely goes a long way. So thanks again for watching and we will see you next time.